What's going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, you're not gonna believe where I'm at. I am standing right next to Knight Rider, the kit car. This is a real one. Guys, check it out. Boom. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. We have kit, one of the original ones, like it says over here, screen use kit by these guys. Look at that beauty. You guys want to see the inside? Let's go check it out. Look at that, guys. It's beautiful. Let's go look at the other side. Guys, there it is. Check that out. Look at this beautiful, beautiful machine. PMD seats. Look at that. sure some of you guys know this from watching the channel but I'll go over it anyways. Um, out of the five surviving cars this is the only one that was a true stunt car. All the other cars that are survivors there were um, hero cars, the convertible car from the last season, um, the, the uh, right hand blind drive car those all still exist but this was the only one that was designated from, to be a stunt car from the very very beginning. On the show um, this car was actually a hard top. It did not have T-tops. It had fake strips like these that would go across the front and the back and one down the middle to make it look like it had T-tops when the car was risen by on the camera. Because remember, we're not watching this in Blu-ray in 1982 <laughs> and no one's going to notice those details. It barely me. had VCRs. Yeah, exactly. Um, this car also did not have the dash you see in it. Um, since it was a stunt car, they put a fiberglass shell in that kind of resembled the shape of the Knight Rider dash, but it didn't have the pods or the lights. It just had a small round stunt wheel for the stunt drivers to be able to turn the car and you know, do all that stuff. When the show ended in 1986, Universal Studios um, kept this car because they, um, they needed a second car at their theme park display. So some of you might be familiar, Universal Studios since late 1983 had a Knight Rider car on display at their theme park in Hollywood. So visitors could come over, they could sit in the car, they'd have a voiceover artist off screen, not William Daniels, usually, usually, that would pretend to be kid. The car was outfitted with microphones, all that stuff. But as you can imagine, hundreds of thousands of people over the years um, getting in that car, it got a lot of wear and tear. So the studio realized they needed a second car so they could swap two cars back and forth. They could take one off display, repair it, while they had another one on display. So because of that, Universal Studios sent this car out to a company called Pacific T-Top in 
Huntington Beach, and they cut out uh, the T tops. They put aftermarket T tops in the car. Universal Studios also took what's called their insert dash. So during the filming of the show, the insert dash, anytime you saw a kid's voice up close, or the speedometer, or the tack board, none of that was in a car. It was actually a dashboard that sat on sawhorses on a sound stage. So when the show ended, they took that dash, they put it in storage. But um, whenever they were building this car, they took the, the insert dash out of storage and put it in this car. Um, so that's why we decided to keep this car having the full dash because it, that is part of its history, even though it didn't look like this on the show. Um, the car only has about 600 original miles on it, believe it or not. It was used, uh, this car was only used in the third and fourth seasons for about 12 episodes. Uh, my absolute favorite scene, which um, when you go out, you have to look at the intro board I have over there. There's a scene, it's in the fourth season opening credits. You see a kid driving through the desert. There's tons of bombs blowing up on both sides of him. And that is this car, which is awesome. It was also used a lot in uh, the fourth season premiere, Night of the Juggernaut, in Chicago. So they shipped this car to Chicago for the filming of that episode. Um, yeah, it only has 600 miles because, if you think about it, they got this car brand new. They converted it, they put it on a car carrier, they put it to the set, it did what it needed to do, it went back to the car carrier, so it never saw any road time. And then when the show ended, it literally sat dormant for uh, 15, 20 years. Um, it wears about 15 layers of paint on it, because even though it's only 600 miles, it's 600 very hard miles. Um, you can see here spider webbing in the paint. Um, there's, it's even worse on the other side, all these cracks in the paint. This is all because this car was bashed on this side, it was bashed on the other side, it was rear-ended, and when the show ended, they would um, uh, slap body filler on. Of course, AJ's going to know. They would slap body filler on and uh, put another coat of paint on, sometimes with the paint still wet, and then send it out to, to be filmed again. So um, even this trim here, this is rubber trim, but it, it's so crusty because there's so much paint on it. Because all they, literally, they would just mask off like mirrors and windows. They didn't care about any of the trim or anything. They would just spray mold the car to get it out. Uh, the car is equipped with a brake line lock system. Hold on a second. AJ is me. Let me just text them. He's, he's my co night rider guy, and I'm saying I'm in the middle. The brake line lock system. So the studio um, installed that so Jack Hill and the other stunt drivers on the show, um, they could hit a foot pedal. There's a small little button down by the brake pedal. Press that. There's a loud buzzer that rings on the inside of the car to let the stunt guys know that the line lock is activated. And what that does is it allows them to do burnouts, 180s, 360s, like super easy. It's so super easy, I can do it. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. So when the studio um, uh, put this car over the water, they deactivated it, but they left all the components there. So I just had to remove the wires back up that part again. Yeah, it was pretty amazing. So are you showing us, showing us that later? How that works? Actually, <laughs> before we brought it in on Friday, we were doing it. Yeah, the oh, there you go. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's to keep the sun out. Notice how there's no tint on there? That's because um, they needed to be able to film through the windshield unobstructed. And um, so this that glass, they contracted out a special company to build the windshields for these cars so there would be no blockage. I know it's on the videos, but can you tell us how you acquired the car? Yeah, so um, the car in 2008, um, the car had sat behind a maintenance building at Universal Studios for about 15 years. In 2008, um, the powers that be there were cleaning up the lot. They had a lot of stuff laying around, and someone decided they didn't need this anymore, so they sent it to a salvage yard in Los Angeles. Um, we had we had connections with the studio for a long time. We're 
we've been in touch with the uh, band community, all this stuff forever. So as soon as it left, we got word that it was leaving. Right. And um, I called AJ. I heard about it. I called AJ. The next day, he was there in Los Angeles. He took a flight overnight. He was there. And it took them three days because they weren't supposed to sell the car. There's, they, they said, you can buy any part you want, off that you want, and we have to crush the show. Right. It took AJ three days to convince him to sell him the whole car. Uh, so thankfully, he actually came in on the last day with a sawzall ready to cut the car in half and take it out of pieces. And I think at that point they said, oh, that, you're serious. That day, that, that, that was right the day with the sawzall. Yes. I bought the sawzall to hack this car up. And said, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so does the car. They sold it for it. Well, no, no. AJ thought, well, maybe they'll let me cut the car in half to show them we'll never put it on the road. But when he came in with that, they're like, okay, we can tell you're serious, and they sold him the whole car. Would you, would you ever sell it? No. No, okay. I, think, I, figured, I figured you would say that. <laughs> Actually, Joe, one more question. I know, I know it's not for sale. What would you value something like this? Inconceivable? Inconceivable. Um, <laughs> it's so hard to say because there hasn't been an original car up for sale in uh, 15 years. But one of the tour cars, one of the six tour cars, just sold for 200000 And it was a tour car that we used to show. I don't know. I really don't care because <laughs> I'm not going to sell it. It's not, it's not about money for me. I yeah, no, I got it. Have it and take it and be able to show people. So, right. Yeah. I try not to think about it because no it worries. just complicates my childhood. Got it, got it. I figure I asked. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Well, did, I, did you do any paint, paintwork on the car at all? Uh, minimal. Got... Just a few paint. Like, for example. Um, I remember you told me to set the bumper. Yeah, the bumper, there were literally chunks. Like, you could, you could pick giant pieces off the bumper. So I went through and I redid the bumper, but I didn't fix, like, cracks. We wanted it. We wanted it to show its age and show what it's been for, um, but and it's still it's still evolving. Like this crack, this chip right here just came out the other day. And it's a fine line because I want it to be somewhat presentable, but I don't want it to be like immaculate. So like if this gets worse, I might touch that up. But I, I really want to show that because if you guys want to come around here, I want to show you one more thing. about getting bashed and crashed in Bondo. If you look right here, you guys can come in and take a look. This is, you can see this whole area is all spider webbed. Mm -hmm. And even this body line, this is much more bowed than it should be because it got rear-ended a number of times. But this is, I can't tell the story if I come over here and this is all clean and nice. But you can see where all the body filler is, all the cracks. And, you know, this is still evolving and new cracks are forming and it's fine. As long as big chunks aren't falling off that look really bad, I'm going to leave it. So, yeah, if you, if you get a close-up right there, you can see all that. And of course, I had to bring this guy. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Simply type in John Concha, hit subscribe, and hit the bell.